What's up guys? My name is Tyler and welcome to another episode of Creative Tech. Today I'll be reviewing the Tamron 17-28 f2.8. Now just a disclaimer, this review is going to be more focused on the video aspect of this lens, but I did take some pictures with it and I will be touching on that briefly. I'll try to put the raw files in the comments section for all you pixel peepers out there to download. If this is your first time here, thanks for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos. As some of you may know, I shoot on the Sony a7 III which uses E-mount lenses and I already own the Tamron 28-75 and I absolutely love it. It's what I'm filming this on right now. And the 17-28 to is the perfect complement to this lens. So these lenses would be considered the budget options to the Sony's uh, G Master lines of lenses. The Tamron 17 to 28 is priced at 899 US compared to the 16 to 35 G Master at 1995 US. So the Tamron saves you over a thousand dollars. Now some of you may be thinking that it's not really comparing apples to apples with the differences in focal lengths, but when you take the companion lenses into consideration, the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8 and the 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master, you are getting a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to the Tamron options. For a total of $1,778, you get a focal range of 17 millimeters up to 75 millimeters, not including if you utilize the crop mode on full frame cameras. Whereas for the G Master lenses, it would cost you $3,764, almost $4,000 for a focal range of 16 millimeters to 70 millimeters. And I, kn I know you get what you pay for, but when you're talking about almost double the price, you need to take the rule of diminishing returns into consideration. Because in my honest opinion, there is no way that the G Master lens is two times better than the Tamron. So when it comes to build quality, the body itself is metal and the zoom and focus rings are made out of a type of rubbery plastic. It isn't the heaviest lens in the world, which I think is a good thing when it comes to carrying my camera bag around. Uh, it comes in at 420 grams, so it does have a bit of weight to it. Um, now one thing about E-mount Tamron lenses is the fact that the focus ring and the zoom ring are inverted. So this is the focus ring and this is the zoom ring. Uh, so compared to other brands of lenses. So that may take some getting used to for some people. Which, speaking of the zoom, this lens has an internal zoom, which is perfect when you're using this lens on a gimbal or a steady cam because it doesn't really shift the weight of the lens at all. And I absolutely love that. So I took this lens on a hike to kind of run it through its paces, which you got to see some of that footage at the beginning of this video. I left the autofocus on pretty much the entire time to try and get a feel of what the lens would be capable of which I pretty much knew what to expect since this is my second Tamron E-mount lens and I gotta say it's pretty great it's really responsive there isn't an overly noticeable amount of breathing or an excessive amount of hunting which I think more credit goes to the a7 III than anything but with this not being a native lens, it certainly shows that, uh, that Tamron went to great lengths to make sure the autofocus performed you know, within a margin of error to Sony's native lenses. As far as manual focus goes, the ring does have an infinite spin, which for me personally doesn't really matter either way. But for other people, you may want to take that into consideration. Let's talk about the image quality. I've got to say, this thing is absolutely tack sharp. Some of the stills I captured really surprised me once I got back to my desk and was able to view them on my monitor. Um, I did notice a very small amount of chromatic aberration in the images, but nothing out of the ordinary, uh, especially considering this is a wide angle lens. With that constant 2.8 aperture, you get that really shallow depth of field and great separation from the background and your subject. There are nine rounded iris blades in this lens, which gives you that nice round bubbly bokeh, and I love that. 
Uh, as far as the video side is concerned, again, it just it just looks amazing. I was able to see the textures and the tree trunks and in the landscape, even though it was almost high noon and you know the sun was out and lighting conditions weren't very ideal. Now, as you would expect, there is an ever so slight amount of softness in the corners and a bit of lens distortion, which there again, we're talking about a wide angle lens here. And for the price, there's going to be some compromises. So overall, I simply can't recommend this lens enough. It possesses the perfect balance of quality and pricing. It gives videographers and photographers alike a more affordable option when it comes to full frame wide angle E-mount lenses. And just think about what you could do with that $1,000 you're saving or $2,000 if you're thinking about getting both the 17 to 28 and the 28 to 75. Uh, when it's all said and done, Tamron have gone above and beyond to compete with Sony's native lenses. And in my opinion, they have delivered a product that not only competes with them, but it also begs the question, are the G Master lenses even worth considering? I mean, if money isn't a problem, then go ahead and, and get the best of the best. And uh, on a side note, I'll put some I'll put some links in the description if you wanted to purchase this lens. But just a heads up, it's it's been on back order since the day it came out. So be prepared for that to go on for I'd say the next few months. The same thing happened when Tamron released the 28 to 75. So some of us may just need to be patient. All right, guys, that's going to be it from me. Be sure to let me know what you guys think or if you have any questions down in the comments section below. And don't be afraid to let me know if there is anything you would want to see in future videos. As always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay creative.